Sara Snogger Plinse. You are a member of the Nobel Committee in Chemistry and uh, you have talked to the Nobel laureates just for half an hour ago, just before the press conference. Uh, what was your reaction? Uh, they were both very happy, very happy and very pleased and I think they share our excitement of this year's prize. It's a very good prize. Do you think they expected the prize? Um, I think they, it's, very, it's a very difficult question because there are so many great discoveries made every year and during many years, but I'm pretty sure they know that this, are, this is something big and these are very important discoveries. Uh, Brian Kobelka was actually a graduate student of Robert Lefkowitz, as I understand, um, for some time ago, was it in the 80s? Or? Yeah, well, as far as I know, he was a postdoctoral fellow with Robert Lefkowitz, and it was actually the two of them together that cloned the gene and sequenced the beta adrenergic receptor and found the homology with Rhodopsin. They had actually, uh, as they mentioned, a real eureka moment in their life. What was it? Yeah, it was known at the time that there were several receptors and it was known that they all signal on the inside of the cell using G proteins. That has been awarded before with a Nobel Prize. Um, but they didn't know that the receptors, or that all the different receptors were looking the same. And when they got the amino acid sequence of the beta adrenergic receptors and saw the homology with rhodopsin, they immediately understood that also the receptors in the membrane are built in the same way and function in the same way. And that was a, that was a real surprise and eureka moment. And even if the receptors were known before, nobody realized that they are just the same. No, and it may be difficult to understand that today, when we are so familiar with structural and functional homologies, but we have to remember this was back in the 1980s, and not so many protein families were discovered in this way. So this is what was the hard part of it? Yeah, the hard part, the, the, to obtain this sequence was, a very, was the result of many years, almost a decade's hard work to extract the receptors and get enough material to be able to sequence it. So this is kind of laboratory work? Yes, many of the discoveries behind this prize are hard laboratory works over many, many years, not giving up even if it takes two or three decades. Now they both receive the Nobel Prize, um, how important is it, do you think, to be in a laboratory of a future Nobel Prize winner? <laughs> I don't know if that's important, because how can you tell and how can you know? I think it's important to be in a good laboratory where there are great ideas and where there is passion for science and where there is persistence, not giving up. And if you really want to achieve something, that you keep on going and don't give up, even if it takes you decades. So the main characteristics of the Nobel laureate is not to give up even if you don't get what you want. <laughs> yeah, not to give up and also to be very, very smart. You don't sit there and wait for 10 years to find a solution. They work hard at the bench and they come up with smart solutions. So they gradually move forward and closer and closer to the goal. This is also a little puzzling because the pharmaceutical drugs existed before the receptors were known uh, to chemists or to medical doctors uh, as beta blockers, for example. They have been around for much longer time than the science of the receptors uh, has been developed. How did they know to develop the drug? Uh, they probably didn't know. Uh, many drugs that we use are discovered by serendipity, trial and error. Uh, so. The, the difference for the future will be that now when we know what these receptors look like, the structures as high resolution, we know about this aspect of bias signaling that different similar ligands can cause very different biochemical effects. That will now lead to the possibility to make new drugs with fewer side effects. Do any of uh, the two laureates, like Lefkowitz and uh, Kobilka, do they have patents on the receptors? To be honest, I do not know. Um, I also wonder when we we'll listen to this wonderful press conference uh, that I could uh, also 
be perhaps in, at the Karolinska Institute and listen to a prize conference for Nobel Prize in Medicine. How do you define the borders between chemistry and medical uh, research? I think in, the, in modern science the borders have been uh, not a waste, but the borders are not as sharp anymore. And both chemistry and medicine are molecular subjects today. Medicine is no longer just giving something to a patient and observing what happens. Also medicine is a molecular field. And many great discoveries are really at the interface between the traditional subjects. We were talking about the, the research uh, in the 80s when uh, Brian Kobilka was a postdoc at Robert Lefkowitz laboratory, but the research is uh, still going on and Lefkowitz uh, mentioned that he is going to his uh, uh, laboratory. Uh, what, what is the question today? Uh, Lefkowitz today is working a lot with this aspect of bias signaling the properties of receptors that make them able to respond to more than one kind of substance and giving different responses inside the cell. And Brian Kobilka? Uh, Brian Kobilka, I don't know exactly because the last, the, the molecular structure, it came out as late as September 2011. Uh, and exactly what he's doing at the moment, I don't know. But after that structure came out, actually in the same number of nature, he also studied the complex with another method, amide protein exchange coupled to mass spectrometry, to confirm that although he used so many tricks to get the receptor to crystallize in the active state, it still looks like the real active state that is not manipulated. So it's still ongoing science? Yes, definitely. I think this is just the beginning of a huge field. Oh, this is wonderful. Thank you so much, Sarah Snorri for being with us. Thank you. Thank you.